Welcome to part three and the final part of this tutorial series where we're creating this stylized cartoon Thanksgiving turkey in Blender. So in the previous part, in part two, we had sculpted and modeled the entire turkey. And in this part, we're gonna do the lighting and the materials and the rendering and the compositing and get the final finished render. Now, as I mentioned in part one, I'm not going to be adding in the pumpkins, which I showed in the final artwork. And I'm also not going to be adding in the happy Thanksgiving text. But if you'd like to add those into your own artwork, then you can do that in your own time. And I actually have a tutorial on how to create those pumpkins. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll have a link in the description. And if you'd like to help support this channel, you can also purchase the procedural pumpkins tutorial files. And you can also purchase the finished tutorial files for this Thanksgiving turkey on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And that's a great way to help support this channel. And you can also check out the YouTube memberships if you'd like to help support the channel here on YouTube by clicking on the join button down there next to the subscribe button. And if you're enjoying this tutorial series and you'd like to send me a little tip, you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube and send me a little tip. So to start off with this part, I want to make the sculpted objects be lower topology just so that it'll render a little bit faster and the scene won't be quite as big. So what I'm going to do is select one of the objects here. I'm just going to select the body object. And if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see it is pretty high detail and we definitely don't need it to be that high detail. So in object mode, I'm going to go here to the modifier properties and I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm going to add the decimate modifier. So it's right here under generate decimate. So if we turn this ratio down, it's going to get rid of more and more of the topology, but it's going to do the best job that it can to keep the object shape. So I'm going to turn this ratio down to like a 0.5. That way it's going to get rid of half of the geometry, but you can see the sculpt pretty much looks exactly the same. It is maybe a tiny bit lower quality on the edges. So if you wanted to, you could just turn this up to like a 0.6. That might look just a little bit better, um, but you can just turn this down and it will lower the topology, but still keep the object shape. So I want to add the decimate modifier to all of the other sculpted objects. So I'm going to select the feet here. I'm also going to hold down the shift key and select the wings. Also hold down the shift key and select the neck and also the head and also the beak. So those are all the objects that we sculpted. So then lastly, I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the body object because that has the decimate modifier. And you can see this object has a yellow outline because it's selected last. So it is the active object. So what I'm now going to do is press control L and that's going to bring up the link and transfer data. And I want to go down here and click on copy modifiers. So it's going to take the modifiers from the active object and it's going to add it to the other modifiers. So now these all have the decimate modifier. So now what I can do is just apply all the modifiers at once. And how I can actually do that is just hold down the shift key and make sure all these objects are selected. So shift and select all the objects. You can see they all have the decimate modifier. And then I can click on object and then I can go down here to convert and I can convert to a mesh. Now these objects are already a mesh object, but when you tell Blender to convert them to a mesh, they're going to apply the modifiers. So now if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see the topology is much lower. You can see it's kind of made those faces larger and got rid of some of the vertices, but it's still keeping the object shape. And if you wanted to, you could go even lower so you could add another decimate modifier and you can see I can actually turn the decimate ratio way down and you can see it's going to be much lower topology. If I applied this, then you would be able to see it. You can see that's much lower topology, but it's still keeping the object shape. I'm not going to do that though, so I'm going to press Control Z to undo that, um, but that is fine topology. Um, but if you wanted to, you could lower the topology even more, but that'll just make the topology a bit less dense. And so the performance of the Blender file will be a little bit better. So I now want to add a camera. So I'm going to press Shift A and let's go right down here and I can click on camera. And then you can just move to wherever you want the camera to be. And then you can press Control Alt Numpad 0. And Control Alt Numpad 0 will bring the camera to wherever you are. And I want this to be a square image. You could make it any size you want. I want it to be a square image. So I'm going to click right here on the render properties, actually right down here on the output properties. And you can see there is a resolution X and a resolution Y. 
So I am going to click and then drag down and then let go. And this way I can change both values at the same time. And I'm going to change this to 1920 by 1920. And then I actually want to double the resolution just so that it's very high quality. So I'm going to turn the percentage here to 200. That way it'll be nice and high quality. But of course it will take longer to render the higher quality it is. So if you don't want it to take too long to render, if this is taking too long to render, you could turn that down so it is a smaller image. And then if you click right up here, you can select the camera and you can press G to grab and move the camera around. If you want to move the camera in and out, you can press G to grab, and then you can double tap the Z key, and then you can move the camera in and out. Now, I also want to change the focal length of the camera. So with the camera selected, you can click on the object data properties. And right up here on the lens, you can see there's a focal length. So I'm going to change the focal length to 80. That's going to zoom the camera in a bit, and so everything will look a little bit more flat, and I do think it makes the final render look nicer. So I can press G to grab, I can double tap the Z key, and I can bring this out. I could also double tap the R key if I want to use the trackball rotation and just kind of rotate it around and then bring it down. So something like that will be great. Now also if you go right up here to the render properties, I'm going to be using the Cycles rendering engine. You could definitely use Eevee if you want to. There are a few things with the materials which will work differently in Eevee, but you could definitely use Eevee if you want to. But I'm going to be using Cycles. Now also if you go right down here to the color management, this is right over here on the render properties, I want to use the view transform of Filmic, and then on the look here, I'm going to change this to very high contrast. And this is going to pop out the colors and make things Things look more contrasty and saturated and it'll make the final image look nicer. And now I'm going to hold down the Z button and I'm going to move my mouse up to the rendered view so I can actually preview it in the rendered mode. And because we're in cycles render, I don't actually want cycles to try to render everything around here, I just want it to render what the camera can see. So in the camera view, I can press Control B. And then I can drag a box around the camera and let go. And that's going to add this camera boundary. So it'll only render whatever is in the boundary. And if you're in Blender Eevee, this feature doesn't work. It's just for cycles to speed up the render times. Now you can see that the lighting looks quite terrible. So let's add in the HDRI that I mentioned in part one. So I'm going to click right over here to go to the world properties and you can see on default there's just a default color here and it's just gray and so I want to add in an HDRI to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections. So I'm going to click on the yellow dot here next to color and then I'm going to choose environment texture and then we can click on the open button to open up the HDRI. So here's the HDRI that I'm going to be using. It's a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. Link will be in the description and I downloaded the 1k HDR version so I'll just double click on it to add it in and you can see it's giving some nice realistic lighting and reflections. Now I want it to be a bit less strong so on the strength here I can just turn this to like a 0.5 and that way it'll just be half as bright but it's still going to give some really nice lighting and reflections to the object. Now I actually don't want to see the HDRI in the background, so I'm going to click right back here on the render properties and I'm going to open up this film tab and I'm going to check mark transparent and that way the camera won't render anything in the background so it'll be transparent. And then in the compositor we will add a cool background with some Thanksgiving colors. So now let's do the lighting and then we can do the materials. So for the lighting I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go here to light and I'm going to add an area light. And I'm going to hold down the Z button and actually go back to solid view. And I want to rotate the light over and bring it over and I can scale it up so that it's really big. So just something like that. I want a nice big light just to kind of light up the turkey. Let's click right over here on the object data properties and I can hold down the Z button and go into the rendered view just to preview what that's looking like. So I do want to make it much stronger. So let's turn the power to like 1,500. I think 1,500 is good, but then I'll also bring it back a little bit and scale it up. So now we're going to get some nice bright lighting on the objects. And also here for the color, I am going to make this just a very slight yellow color. I think that will look pretty nice. And then I want to add another one of these lights over here. So I'm going to select this light. I'll press 7 on the numpad to go to top view, and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. And let's rotate the light over. And I'm going to scale this light down because I don't want it to be quite as big. All right, navigate down here. I can kind of rotate it down and bring it down. And I don't want it to be quite as strong. So let's just turn the power down to maybe like 400. That's pretty good. 
I can press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and you can see it's just adding a little bit more light. So this is kind of like the main light and then this here, this is just going to be like the fill light. So it's just a little bit smaller. And then I want to add some rim lights on the back. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go back to solid view. Let's select this object and I can press seven on the numpad for top view. And I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and let's rotate this light over and I'm going to have this be a rim light. So I'm going to change the shape here instead of square to rectangle. And then I want to drag the size X and I want to make it smaller just so that it is good for a rim light. So it's just going to be kind of a long light like that. And then I'm going to bring it in a bit closer. And for the rim light, I think having it be a blue color is actually really nice. I think um, blue and yellow lighting goes really well together because it looks very natural. So right here on the color, I'm going to make this kind of like a slight blue color, something like that. And then it is probably going to be a bit too strong. Let's just go into the camera view and I can hold down the Z button and go into rendered view. And I do want to make it a bit less strong. Let's turn the strength down to like 500, 500 on this light. So it's a bit less strong, but I could also bring it a bit closer, maybe scale it up. So if I zoom in here, you can see it's giving just a tiny little blue light there on the edge. And I do want to add another rim light on this side. So with this light selected, I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and let's rotate the light over and I can press seven on the numpad for top view and I want to rotate this light further and just kind of stick it here. So now you can see that this light is adding just a nice little soft blue light on the back there. But if you look here on the side, you can see it is giving just a little blue light there on the edge and that will just give a nice rim light and kind of pop the character out from the background. And it is a little bit hard to see right now, but once we do the materials and the materials will be more reflective, you'll definitely be able to see the lights better. So now to do the materials, I'm going to click right over here to go to the shading workspace. And so over here in the shading workspace, I have the procedural nodes right here, the shader nodes, and then I also have the 3D space here. So I'm going to go into the camera view by pressing zero on the numpad and I can go into the rendered view. And then right up here, I want to click on use nodes so I can use the shader nodes. And then I need to select one of these objects and you can see it's going to show me the shader nodes and I can click on new just to add a new material. I'm going to add a new material to the body and I can just rename this material to feathers. So I'm now going to be adding in that pointiness value using the geometry node, which I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial series. And if you're using Blender Eevee, the pointiness value won't work. So you could use the ambient occlusion node instead, or you could just use a single color. I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the geometry node, not to be confused with geometry nodes. This is the geometry node in the shader editor. And then I want to take this pointiness value and let's put that into the base color. Now it's going to be very subtle and hard to see. So to make it more contrasty, I can press shift A. I can go to the search and I can search for the color ramp. Oop, that was the wrong one. Color ramp. And I want to stick the color ramp right here in between the geometry and the principal shader. And then I have the node wrangler add on enabled. So if you don't have that enabled, you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences and in blenders user preferences, you can go to the add ons tab here and on the search, you can search for node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add on it's built in a blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So now that the node wrangler is enabled, I can hold down the control and shift key and then I can select this color ramp and that's going to preview the values of the color ramp on the object. So if I drag this together, now you can really see what the pointiness value does. So the pointiness value makes the cracks darker and then it makes the edges lighter. And again, in Blender Eevee, this won't work. And also if you're in the material preview, you won't be able to see it. So make sure you're in rendered mode. And again, if you're using Blender Eevee, you could add like the ambient occlusion node and you can see the ambient occlusion node kind of gives a similar effect. So you could use that instead of the pointiness. You could plug the color into the color ramp and play around with that but I am not going to use this. I like the geometry node better. So I'm going to control shift and select the color ramp. And then I'm going to drag these together to make it more contrasty. So that is looking really cool. Now I do want to change the colors. So let's click on the black tab and on the black tab, I want to make this kind of like a dark brown. So I'm going to make it a bit brighter and then kind of make it towards the orange so that it is brown. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, then right here you can go to the hex value and you can punch in a hex value of 4C 
230D. That is the dark color that I'll be using. And then on this white color right here, I'll click on this color, and I'm going to make this kind of like a lighter brown, almost like an orange. And again, if you'd like to use the same exact color over here on the hex, you can punch in CC7839. And then I can just kind of play around with this if I want to be lighter or darker. So there we go, that is the base color. So I will control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. And that is looking really cool. Now I do want to make it look a bit more shiny because this is kind of like a stylized character. So right here on the roughness, I'm going to turn the roughness down to like a 0.35, just so that the character is a bit more shiny. And also I think it'd be better if it was a bit brighter. So I might drag this over a bit and drag this back a little bit just so that it's a bit brighter. So that is pretty cool. And then I want to add this material to these other objects. So I'm gonna click on the other objects. I can click on the drop down, and I can add the feathers material. So I'm gonna continue to do that by clicking here, clicking up here and adding the feathers. And I'm gonna do that for most of these objects. So I'll add it to the head and also click on the neck. I'm gonna add it to the neck here add the feathers material, but then the eyes are going to have a separate material and the beak and the little red pieces are going to be separate and this will be separate here. And also these objects here, the feet will have a different material. Now I do want to improve this material a little bit because I want to add a little bit of noise. So I'm going to press shift A. I can go to the search and I'm going to search for the noise texture and let's stick the noise texture down here. And then with the noise texture selected, you can press control T that is using the node wrangler add on feature and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now I don't need the mapping node, so I can just select it and press X to delete it. And I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the noise texture on the object more evenly. So let's put the object into the vector and then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Now I want to turn the scale up, so I'm going to turn it up to like a seven. And then I also want it to be very detailed, so let's turn the detail to the max of 15. And then I do think the roughness could be turned up a little bit, so I'll turn the roughness up to like a 0.6. And then I want to take the factor of the noise texture and let's put that into the normal to give it some bump. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues, it looks really dark and it doesn't look bumpy, and that's because we need to convert the noise texture data into normal data. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the bump node and let's put the bump node in between the noise texture and the principle. And then I want the factor to be going into the height value. And there we go. So it now looks really bumpy and it kind of looks like a stylized kind of feather material. It just makes it a little bit bumpy. Now that is way too strong. So I'm going to turn the strength way down to like a 0.1 so that it is much more subtle, but you can see now it looks a bit bumpy. So that is it for the feathers material. So let's do the next material. So the next material is going to be the beak so let's click on the beak here so for the beak i actually want to add a similar node setup so i'm going to click on the drop down here and i'm going to add the feathers material to the beak but then i want to duplicate this so that it is a separate material so i'm going to click on this button right here and that's going to duplicate the material but it'll keep the same information and i can just now rename this to beak so if you click here on the drop down, you can see we have two materials now. And then I don't want the noise texture, so I'm going to delete the bump. So click on the bump and press X to delete it. Click on the noise and X to delete it. And this texture coordinate and X to delete it. And I want to use the pointiness value. And if I control shift and select the color ramp, you can see what it's doing. But I want to change the colors. So I'm going to click on this color here. And I'm going to make this like very, very dark. And the hex value I'll be using for this very dark brown is going to be 261308. And then for this color here, I want this to be like the yellow beak material or the yellow beak color. So I'm going to make this quite a bit brighter and more yellow. And to use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex, you can type in FFBB00. So that is the color that I'll be using. And I think I'll push these together even more so they're bit more contrasty. And then I can control shift and select the final material. Now I want to make the beak more shiny because the beak is going to be kind of shiny. So let's turn the roughness here to just like a 0.2. And that way the beak is a bit more reflective. And then I also want to add a little bit of subsurface just to make it look like a little bit of light is going through the beak. So I'm going to turn the subsurface here to just a 0.1. That'll just add a little bit of subsurface scattering. And then right here on the subsurface color, I wanna make this kind of like an orangey color, so something like that. And if you wanna use the same subsurface color that I'm using over here on the hex, you can type in E7, 
671E. So that is it for the beak material. It's pretty simple. So I want to add the same material to the feet, but then I want to duplicate the material and make it slightly different. So let's select the feet here. I can click on the drop down and let's add the beak material, but then I can click on this icon right here. It looks like two pieces of paper. That's going to duplicate the material and I can just rename this to like legs. And then for this material, you can see it's very shiny and I don't want it to be that shiny. So let's turn the roughness up to maybe like a 0.4 so it is not quite as shiny. And then also I do want to change the color a little bit. So let's control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. I'm going to zoom in here and I want to kind of bring these back so that they're not quite as contrasty. And also this yellow color, I want to make this a little bit more orange. So something like that. So I can control shift and select the final material. And maybe I'll bring this back a little bit and maybe even make this a bit lighter because I think that was a little bit too dark. So something like that. And I do want to leave the subsurface. I think the subsurface looks pretty good. And also this roughness here, I think I will turn the roughness down a little bit more to like a 0.3. So it's just a little bit more shiny. Let's also do the material here for the toes. So I'm going to click on this object here, click on new, and I can just call this like nails. And then right here on the base color, this is going to be a pretty simple material. I'm just going to make it like orange and then make it very dark. So just kind of like a dark material. And let's also turn the roughness down, maybe turn it down to like a 0.2 or a 0.3 so that those nails are a little bit shiny. So something like that. So now let's add the material for the little red thing, which is underneath the chicken, the little red piece of skin. So I'm going to click on the object here, click on new. I can just rename this to like red. And then again, this is a pretty easy material for the base color here. Here. I'm just going to make this like a red color. So make it like a bright red, maybe not super saturated. So bring it up a little bit and make it a bit darker. And then I want to make it very shiny. So let's turn the roughness to maybe like a 0.2 or actually maybe like a 0.3. And then I do want to add some subsurface scattering. So right here on the subsurface scattering, let's turn this to like a 0.2. So it'll allow light to go through and it'll make it look more fleshy. And on the subsurface color here, let's make this red and then I'm going to make it pretty dark. So something like that, maybe a bit darker. And I think that subsurface is a little bit too strong. So let's actually turn the subsurface to like a 0.1. That is definitely better. And I think I might turn up the strength just a little bit, maybe to like a 0.4, so it's not quite as reflective. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's now click on this object here. We can click on the drop down, and let's add the red material to that as well. All right, so we just have a few more materials left. Um, I wanna create the eyebrows material. So let's click on this object here click on new and I can just rename this like to eyebrows and then this is going to be a really easy material let's just take the base color and make it fully black and then I can also click on this object here and I can click on the drop down let's add the eyebrows and then also click on the little bit of hair and click on the drop down and we'll add the eyebrows and I think this material could be a bit shiny so let's just turn it down to like maybe a 0.4 so it's a bit more shiny and also you could turn the base color up just a little bit if it's a bit too dark so I might just make it like a very dark gray that is pretty good all right so let's do the eye materials so I'm going to select the eye Let's click on a new here to add a new material. And I can just call this like eye white. And for the base color, I'm gonna make sure this is fully white. And then I want it to be very shiny because I want the eye to look wet. So let's turn the roughness all the way to zero so that it is very shiny. And then you can click on this eye here. You can click on the drop down, and let's add the eye white. Now I wanna make another material and I want that to be the eye black. So let's open up the side panel here, and I'm gonna go over here to the material properties. And I want to add a new material in the object's material slot. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this plus icon right here. And then I can click on the new button to add a new material. And I can just rename this to eye black. Now for this material, it's also going to be very shiny. So let's turn the roughness all the way to zero. And then on the base color here, I'm going to make this fully black. Now we can't see it taking effect and that's because we haven't assigned it to the parts of the object. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go back to solid view, and then I'm going to actually go back here to the layout because it's a bit easier to do in the layout, hold down the Z button, go to solid view. So I can press the period on the numpad and that's going to zoom me to the object and I can press the tab key to go into edit mode. So I want to click right up here to go to the face select and then I'm going to press the A key to deselect everything and I'm going to press the C key for the circle select and then I can click and drag and just select all of those faces there. And then I can press the escape key to get rid of the circle select.
Now I want to hold down the Shift and Alt key, and I want to select right there to select the faces. Hold down the Shift and Alt key, select that loop of faces, and Shift Alt, select that loop of faces. So I can now click right here on the material properties, and I want to select the eye black. And then I can click on the assign button. So now if I tab back to object mode, hold down the Z button and go into the rendered view, you can see that the eye is now black. So I can hold down the Z button and go to solid view. Let's do that for the other eye. So I'm going to select the other eye, press the tab key to go into edit mode. I can press the A key to deselect everything. And another way to do this, possibly an easier way to do this, is to go here to the vertex select. And then you can just select that vertex right there. You can then press Control plus, and that is going to select all the vertices around it. So press Control plus until all those loops of vertices are selected. So I now need to add a new material in the material slot, so I'm going to click on the plus icon. Let's click on the drop down. I want to add the eye black, and then we have that selected. We have the eye black selected, so I can click on the assign button. Let's press tab to go back to object mode, and I can go back to shading, and I can hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view, just to preview that. So now that I've added the materials, I want to actually make the lighting a bit brighter because some of the lighting isn't quite as bright as I want. So I can click on some of these lights. I'm gonna click on the area lights and I'm gonna make this a bit brighter, maybe turn it up to like a 600. I can also click on this back area light here, maybe turn this up to like a 700 so it's a bit brighter. And then also if I click on the main light right here, there's the main light. I could turn this up just a little bit so it's a little bit brighter. So I might turn this up to like a 1,700. That might be a bit better. You can of course play around with that, maybe like a 1,800. I don't want it to be too bright because then it might be blown out, um, but something like that is pretty good. All right, so we're now going to be adding the shadow catcher on the ground. So I'm going to go back here to the layout and then I'm going to press shift A and let's go here and add a plane. And I can press S to scale. We're just going to scale this plane up really big and I can also rotate it on the z-axis and just rotate it kind of sideways like this so that it is pointed where the camera is pointing. And then I can zoom in here and I'm going to bring it down on the z-axis and I'm going to bring it down here so that the turkey is standing on the ground. And you can press G to grab, then you can hit Z and bring it up and down. You can also hold down the shift key to make your movements more sensitive as you drag that. So just like that. Now if I hold down the Z button and go into rendered view, you can see that it's actually reflecting a lot of light back up and I don't really like that. So with the object selected, I'm going to click on new here. I can just rename this material to ground. And then right here on the base color, I'm just going to make this kind of like a dark gray color so it's not reflecting quite as much of the light. So something like that is good. And then I want to make this transparent so that it'll only catch the shadows. So if you select the ground plane, you can click right up here to the object property properties, and then you can click here on visibility. And you can see there is a mask shadow catcher. So I'm going to check mark that. And so now you can see there is a tiny little shadow that it's catching from the turkey, but then it's mostly transparent. So we are almost ready to render this. If you go right up here to the render properties, there's a few things we can do to make it render faster. So I'm going to go into rendered view and on the sampling here, I'm just going to render this with 100 samples. That will be fine. And then right here, you can see there are light paths. If you turn the light paths down, then it will render faster. So right here on the clamping, I'm going to turn these to zero. Right here on the filter glossy, I can turn that to zero and I can uncheck the caustics, both of these caustics. And then also right here on the max bounces if you open this up I'm gonna turn like the total just to two and the diffuse and the glossy I will both just turn that to two but then all the other light paths so the transmission and the transparent I can turn that to two and that way it'll render faster because it won't have to calculate as many of the light paths. And then just one last thing I wanted to add before we actually render this, I want to add a little highlight in the eyes. So I'm gonna press Shift A, let's go here to Mesh, and I'm going to add a circle. And I'm gonna navigate over here to the side and I can bring the circle over, and I'm gonna rotate the circle so that the circle is pointed towards the character. I can scale it down, and then I will tab to go into edit mode, and I can press the F key to fill a face. And I'll tab to go back to object mode, and maybe rotate this over or move it over a little bit. So now I'm going to go into the camera view, and I'm going to go into the rendered view, and I'm going to click right over here on the material properties, and I can click on new to add a new material to the circle. 
and I can just rename this to light. And then on the surface, I don't want this to be the principled shader. So I'm going to click on the principled and I'm going to instead change this to emission so it's emitting light. And then I can turn up the strength. So I'm going to turn the strength up maybe to like a 10 so it's a bit brighter or maybe even like a 20. And now if I zoom in here, you can see that it is actually reflecting that light. So it is very small. So back over here, I'm going to scale the circle up to make it bigger. And if I press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view, I can zoom in and you can see now there's that little highlight on the eyes and that's going to make the character feel much more alive. So let's press Control S to save and then to render this, you can press F12 or you can click on render and render the image and the render finished and you can see if I zoom in here adding the highlights to the eyes really makes the character feel more alive. So now let's do some compositing to finish this up. So I can click right over here to go to the compositing tab and I can click on use nodes to use the compositing nodes. I'm also going to drag the timeline and make it smaller. Now I also turned on the node wrangler add-on earlier in this video. So I'm going to hold down the control and shift key and select the render layers. And that's going to add the viewer node and it's going to allow us to preview the image in the background. And you can press V to zoom the background out and Alt V to zoom the background in. And also if you don't see the background, make sure you have the backdrop turned on. And then what I'm also going to do is hold down the shift key and right click and drag and let go. And that's gonna add a reroute. And this way we just have one single wire that we can add nodes into. So let's press shift A. I'm gonna go here to the search. And I first wanna search for the RGB curves just to do a little bit of color correction. So I'll put the RGB curves right here after the render layers. And then I basically just wanna make it a bit more contrast contrasty and have it pop out a bit. So I can click to add a little dot and let's maybe bring this up a bit and then I can click to add another dot and let's bring this down. So by adding this little curve here, it's just going to make everything look a bit more contrasty and also if I bring this up, it'll make things look a bit brighter. So something like that. You can also go here to the red if you want to add a bit more red or less red and also here on the G for green, you could add more green or less green. Um, I want to leave that how it is so I'll click on the X to get rid of it and also here on the B for blue, you could drag this up or down if you want to add more or less blue. Now I want to create a gradient in the background, so let's press Shift A. I can go to the search and I'm going to search for the box mask. Let's stick the box mask here. And then if I make this bigger, you can see there is a width and a height. So I'm going to drag the width and the height just to make the box mask bigger. And then if I control shift and select the box mask, you can see it's basically just a white box with black in the background. Now I want to blur this so I can press shift A. I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for the blur node and let's stick the blur node here. And then I can click on the X and then drag down and then I can drag forward and this way we can change both values at the same time. And I want to blur this a lot so I'm actually going to click and drag down and let go and I'm going to type in 1300. So it's going to blur it a lot. And then I don't want it to be white and black so I want to change the colors so I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the color ramp and let's put the color ramp right here after the blur node and then I can change the colors and that'll change the colors of the actual background. So I'm first going to click on the black tab here and I'm going to make this like a dark brown color, something like that. Then I'm going to click right over here on the white tab and click on the color and I'm going to make this kind of like a Thanksgiving color, kind of like a classic bright orangey color for Thanksgiving. And if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using, the lighter brown is going to be a hex value of D8. 893D and then on this dark brown right here this is going to be a hex value of 3B 1 0 0 0 and if it's taking too long for the blur to load up you don't need to use a blur value of that size and also if your resolution is smaller you won't need to blur it quite as much so there it is there is the background so I can now add this with the image so I'm gonna press shift a let's go to the search and I'm gonna search for an alpha over node and let's put the alpha over after the color ramp and then I can actually bring the composite and the viewer up and I can actually bring the reroute over and I'm going to control shift and select the reroute. And then I want to take the alpha over image and I want to put that into the reroute. So then the color ramp is going to go into the top image and the RGB curves will go into the bottom image and this will add them both together. And then there's just one more thing that I want to do. I want to add the denoise node so I can press shift a 
I can go to the search and I'm going to search for the denoise node and this just drop the denoise after the alpha over. And on the accurate here, I can just change it to fast. I find that it doesn't affect the quality, but it denoises the image a bit faster. So I'll just wait for this to composite. So to save this image, you can press F11 or you can also just go to the image editor. And we want to click here on the render result and let's change this to the viewer node to preview the final composited image. And that is looking really nice. You can see we have the reflections there. We have some nice lighting with a rim light. And also right down here, you can see the shadow catcher. So the shadow catcher is adding a little shadow there and it makes it look like the turkey is actually standing on a ground. So to save this image, I can click on image and let's click on save as. And I'll just save this in a folder with my files as Thanksgiving Turkey and click on save as. So there we have it. That is going to wrap it up for this three part tutorial series on how to create this stylized cartoon Thanksgiving Turkey. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and thank you so much for watching. And as I record this, it's almost Thanksgiving of 2022. So happy Thanksgiving and I hope you have a great Thanksgiving day. And if you'd like to help support this channel and purchase the finished tutorial files, then you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And some great ways to help support the channel here on YouTube is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on the join button next to the subscribe button. And I do appreciate all of your support. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. Thank you for watching and happy Thanksgiving.